Castro. I am the Ward 4 City Councilor since, since two and a half months ago. I want to welcome you to my very first ever Ward 4 meeting. Thank you so much to everyone who came out tonight. It's a cold, damp day after a big storm, and I, I'm so grateful to all of you for, for making the effort to show up. Thank you. Now, before I start talking and then have my speakers up, I would like to introduce to you the new owner of this facility. It's no longer called the Manual House. It's called Connemara Senior Care, Senior, yeah, Care Campello, and this is John Burke. <laughs> Um, yes, there are multiple. Connemara Senior Living Campello. Um, so again, Susan, thank you and welcome here to uh, Connemara Senior Living Campello. My name is John Burke. Um, together with my wife, Sally, I am the new owner of Connemara Senior Living Campello. Uh, quick uh, background on me, uh, for the last 25, 30 years I've been in healthcare, in elderly healthcare. Most recently I owned a group of skilled nursing facilities in Boston, and I was looking for something different to do, and this came across my desk, and, and I said, wow, this is something I really want to get involved in, and I live in Duxbury, Massachusetts. I'm here every day, right, Carol? Um, so I closed on March 1st, right, March 1st. What happened on March 1st? Up and the rain was blowing sideways, and it was crazy. That was my first day. Had a couple days off, and then it was snowing like crazy, right? So it's been, it's been, I've been really uh, baptized into into running this building, and I know, I know all its quirks. I want to know what's good about it, what's not so good about it, and that's been a good thing, right, Gertrude? Um, so I'm here every day. And that makes a big difference. You can ask, you know, ask any of the residents, right? Um, so, what does that mean? Well, I'm going I'm to invest heavily in a lot. Of, some things aren't going to change. The same staff that's been here for a lot of, in a lot of cases, 15, 20 years. Um, that's not going to change. Um, some things will change. We plan investing in our staff through increased education and training. We plan on investing in our in this beautiful building here through expansion of, uh, of serv services that we provide, um, as well as doing some strategic renovations as well. Um, and we plan on also investing in our community. It's, a, it's important for us to be a very good neighbor here in Brockton, and that's what we plan on doing. I plan, we plan on being very involved in the neighborhood and. Um, and that's important. And uh, anyway, right here, I'm I'm here every single day. If you ever have a question, please just pop in and see me. Um, I want this to be the best experience for for my staff, my residents, and my neighbors. And it's, it's a great responsibility, one that I don't take lightly, but one that I'm really excited for. So I thank you very much and uh, enjoy the cake. That was that those were uh, those were made by uh, Lydia in our dietary department and have the pretty amazing look. And so thank you very much and enjoy your evening. So welcome to this evening's program. Um, and I, I want to start by having some speakers. Uh, my first speaker is here. But before we start, I just want to say I'm so delighted to be the Ward 4 City Councilor. And, and I'm delighted that I managed to win the election in November. And I'm working very hard, and I'm learning a lot, so much. And um, it, it's, it's really an eye-opener in, in a very good way. People at City Hall and at the police department and the fire department have been very kind to me. They're very patient with my questions. They return my phone calls promptly. Um, this has been a good experience so far. The heart of Brockton is big. It's really big. And I just have a feeling we're going to make Ward 4 rock. Certainly with all of you. So before I go any further, let me introduce to you, there are several elected officials here. Um, City Council President Dennis Aneri has just come in. And City Council 
council brand new like me, councillor at large, Jean Bradley Darren Court is here. Ward 5 City Councilor Ann Beauregard was here before all of you, and she will be back before our meeting is over, but she's gone to the planning board meeting to represent some uh, constituents, so I'm grateful that she took the time to come beforehand. She'll be back. And so at this time, I would like to ask the uh, head of the Brockton Recycling Depot, Patrick Sullivan, to speak. What? Correct. What? Correct. Oh, oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. <laughs> there is one more city official who is here, and you'll actually be hearing from him in a few minutes. And that is our Ward 4 um, school committee member, Brett Gormley. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So Patrick Sullivan is here from the Recycling Depot. He is in the process of rolling out a brand new uh, waste and recycling collection system that I think you're all going to love. Well, it's almost here. We've been talking about these uh, new containers and this new system for probably close to two years now. And it's, uh, it's been a long road. It's been a fun road. I've learned a lot myself uh, by just going through this process. But uh, in the end, in the end, we've done a lot. We've done a lot of things, but the trash really is not going to change that much. And all the changes that are going to occur, I feel, are for the better. The lids are attached to the barrel. You're not going to see trash or recycling blowing down the street. Everything's on wheels. Everything is fair. Everyone's going to have the same size trash can. As, as many of you know, we've been a pay-as-you-throw community since 2001 and I was here actually then when we went from uh, being able to put out whatever you want into a measured amount of uh, trash that you could put out and that was basically just because the the cost of disposal is just getting higher and higher and higher and you just can't go raising fees every time the trash goes up we haven't raised any fees in 18 years now and we didn't have to raise fees to do this but we do have to make it fair for everybody, so everyone's going to have the 35-gallon city container, and you can put anything you want in that container every week. And just like before, if you have more than the one container of trash, then you uh, purchase the Brockton bags for your extra trash, and we'll take as many of those as you'd like. You're also allowed still the one big item a week, uh, like you were. Some of the... Uh, larger big items that we found and Mass DEP actually found were being imported to Brockton was the mattresses and couches and TV sets because Brockton was one of the few towns um, that picks up those things curbside for free so other towns were taking advantage of our, our good nature so uh, for a TV set and for those mattresses there's a twenty dollar disposal fee but Anything under that is still free. You can still put out a big item every week for free. We still have yard waste service like we did uh, that we'll be collecting all the yard waste you can put out for free. But the big change that we're having here is the recycling. You're going to be, this isn't the actual uh, recycle container, but it's the same brand and the same company. Our container is going to look like this. Uh, they're being constructed right now, but I'll leave the, the picture up here. It's really, it's a nice looking container. It's black with a maroon lid to have the uh, Brockton school colors. And on top of the lid, there's instructions that are, that's not just going to be a sticker. It's built into the lid, so it's not going to go away. And it will tell you what you can put in the container and what you should avoid putting in the container. The number one thing that the industry and that the state and that Brockton is trying to cut down on is the bags and the recycling. And the reason for that is because, and I have some pictures up here, the bags gum up the gears at the recycle center uh, simply, and they have to go every hour or so, shut down the whole line, cut the bags off, get rid of them, and restart the line. And for that reason, 
it's slowing down the process everywhere, and the state is really encouraging us to, to try to eliminate those bags. Take them to the grocery store if you want to recycle them, but they want you to keep them out of the larger containers. Or you can just treat them as trash. You can throw them away, and they'll go that way. Um, when we roll these out, and these are going to start to roll out the third week of March, and they're going to start by uh, day of the week. So the people with the Monday trash day are going to be the first people that get the containers. The people with the Friday, which I believe a lot of Ward 4 is Friday, yeah. will probably be the last ones to get them. So it's going to take three weeks to roll out the containers. One day you're going to come home, you're going to have two in your driveway. You're also going to have an informational pack tied on the back, <clears throat> which will show just some basic information about the, the plan. In April, we're also going to be sending out the flyer to everyone, so everyone in town will also get the flyer in the mail. Um, the one difference in the recycling is that it's going to be every other week, and depending on what street you live on, you're either going to be an A week or a B week. Uh, it's already up on the website which streets are A weeks and which streets are B weeks. I also have stickers with an A or a B, so if you, if you have a street, even tonight, you tell me what street you live on, I can give you an A or B, stick it on your barrel, and you'll always know when you see the calendar, I'm an A week or a B week. And we also have a book that I'm going to leave with the counselor, so if, uh, she'll, she'll be a source of information on that as well. So. Other than that, there's, uh, like I said, we're working really hard. If you go to the Recycle Center, uh, recently you'll see that the truckloads have been coming in. We have about 14,000 of these already lined up. So we have another 14,000 in the next five days that we're receiving. Uh, we were a little bit behind because of the, uh, the two storms. There was a couple of trucks that we had to delay. But uh, there's 28,000 households on trash in Brockton which means we can need 28,000 of these and 28,000 of these. And we have to deliver them and get them to everyone and uh, try to make everybody happy and answer their questions. So, so it's a project, but we're going to get it done. And I think in the end, it's going to look really good. I think, uh, um, I think people are going to be happy with them. So if anyone has any questions, I, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes? Uh, what do we do with the old thing? Yes, that would be if you put a mattress or a couch or a TV out, when you call it in, you'll have to make the arrangement to make the payment. Yeah, or, or like a TV, you can always bring it down to the recycle center anyway. We, we accept those. So. And then the old bins? The old bins, we're going to make some sort of arrangement. I don't know the exact one yet. Probably an arrangement to either pick them up. I'm also working on something. Sometimes with these bigger bins, uh, some people kept their actual recycle bin in their house before, the little, the little tubs or nearby. So I'm trying to make a sticker to go on that that will tell you what you can put in there. And then just transfer one of your bins now to like your inside bin. So you fill that up, leave this thing out in the yard, you know, and, and transport your recycling from your kitchen to the, to the outside. Are the old bins recycled? The old bins, uh, not not into here. No, they they can't go in here. They're the they're called uh, rigid plastic is like the term for those. They're a different type of recycling. But what we'll probably do, we'll either make an arrangement to. Uh, I saw some other towns where they say just put them out upside down, and the guy will know to take it away, or uh, or to bring it down. There's a there's a few ways. We I haven't figured out the exact way, but it but it is. Uh, We'll make it available. So, yes, ma'am. So I just want to get the items that people will have to pay for. So mm -hmm. it's a TV, yes, box spring and mattress, right. couch. Is That's that it. it. That's all. Nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. Nothing else. And the couch has to be over five feet. So a love seat still free. Yes, yeah. Skip. So if you want to keep those bins, you can keep them, right? Yes. All right. Could you took my idea what I was going to do? What were you going to do? Use <laughs> yeah. it for put inside. I knew you'd think this sounds good. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, quick question. That's the new trash bottle, those are 35 gallons? Yes, it is. Really? That, yep. That, that, that the 
the old no, it's 35. But the old one, actually, the old ordinance was 32, a 32 gallon. Yeah. So we actually uh, increased. Really? Well, yes. the reason the reason I ask is because I already recycle everything possible. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I'm looking at that barrel and I'm thinking, yeah. I'm done. I can't. The big, the big one. The big one is recycled. Right? No, the this big one. No, I understand recycled. that. Oh, okay. No, I, I recycle yeah. everything yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. the trash barrel, I'm looking at it, I'm like. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. How many bags? That's really, really that's No, it'll fit a few bags in there. It, really? Yeah, it's a 35 gallon trash can. That's that's all I can say. It's the same. little 13 gallon trash You know what was happening? Why this looks so small? Is if you were here in the early 2000s, when we went to pay as you throw, and we enforced that 32. And we had no like going over the top and no yep. no anything, and the tonnage dropped. But over the years, with, with as many you know uh, accounts and as many residents right. on trash, people would go to Lowe's and they get the 45 mm -hmm. and the 64, and it almost became the standard. If you drive up and down the street, you find very few 32 gallon barrels anymore. They're all at least 45s. Okay, now that's extra tonnage. That's that that, um, that we're absorbing. We're trying to pay for, it. and we can't anymore. We, you know, we're getting to a point where we got to get it back to what it was. And I think you're just so used to seeing bigger containers that are really non-conforming that they start to seem like they're the normal ones. Right. I was asking because I know my barrel personally isn't one of the 45s. Yeah. I know that for a fact. But, so I bet you if you fill it up and then you pour the water into this one, you're still going to have two gallons. Water, 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 and water. That's the gallons, but yeah. yeah. What does the city currently pay to uh, recycle trash per ton? Any idea? For recycling or for? Uh, for trash. Okay, trash. Um, the bid that came in was probably based on probably mid-70s per ton of trash in mid 20s that you don't make money on recycling anymore. Uh, it costs about $20 a ton to get rid of recycling. You used to, yes. You don't. Are you looking at any way to dispose of uh, styrofoam? Um, styrofoam, you know what you can do if you have blocks of styrofoam, you, uh, you tape them up, put them next to your barrel, that's your big item for the week. Sometimes yeah. sell it. Yeah, we don't sell it. I know Bridgewater uh, Insulation or whatever, they take it for free, but, you, you know, so if you have a, a lot of it, you can bring it over to them. They take it for free and use it for an insulation product. We did took it. Uh, we used to have a thing at the recycle center where you could drop it off, but the company we dealt with went out of business. And they would take the recycle, uh, the styrofoam blocks. Um, guess there was no money in it because they went, they went under. So, so we lost that How source. Are you if they become damaged, who's responsible for that out of curiosity? Because I know myself, I've seen some of the way that the barrels are yep. handled by the guys that pick it up. I just want to know, are they going to be careful with those if we're careful? Yes, they have a 10 year warranty. Okay, so if they, if they get damaged, um, I'll be repaired for the first 10 years. Um, I live at the end of the street, all right? So mm -hmm. when they're empty, mm -hmm. the wind takes those recycling bins and they become projectiles. Oh, yeah, the little so ones, sure. Are they top heavy or something? Yeah, you can, you, you can feel it after. This is pretty heavy. Almost it doesn't down. move around too much, and the barrel doesn't either. I, uh, the only thing I can speak for is, like I said, we've been unloading these for a few weeks. And we have 14,000 of them down there. And I was really scared over the weekend because they said, whatever you do, don't let them domino and just fall, right? <laughs> and so we got these like 65 mile an hour winds. And that, all night I was saying, please don't let them come to the yard. But they were all set up. So I don't know. So there's a little weight to them. Are these going to be picked up as a truck? Yes. They're automated. Uh, the front, the... The recycle ones, you'll see them go in the front. They go, you know how the trucks right now, they're kind of open on the front. They do dump into the front. These ones are closed. 
So it still goes in the front, but it goes into like the little dome and dumps in there. I think that keeps the wind from, uh, from blowing any, any loose stuff around. So it looks good. Those trucks are coming out April 1st. It's still Republic. Um, we did go out to bid and, and they rewanted the. Because I see these drivers, the drivers, they're driving in and doing the barrels with one guy. Yes, it's. one guy trying to lift, you know, keep pushing couch. I know. They work hard. Yeah, they work hard. Those guys really, they work hard. Oh, yeah, because now they'll use the joystick instead of having to jump out. Um, Yes, Michelle. Where can you fill the recycling bin? Because in my house, you mm -hmm. can fill that recycling bin in two weeks. It's okay. Not what happens? You could, well, you can, um, you could, if you do it all the time, you can probably, we can make a thing to get another bin. Okay, so you're open when you the recycling. Yeah, I think we'll be able to work some up. But you can always remember, go down to the recycle center, and six days a week, you can, you can, we have a lot of, you know, a pretty good crowd of people that just come in and empty their containers down there. They don't even put them out, so you're welcome to do that as well. I'm just so glad that the yes, are you dealing with the lawn and leaf the same way that you use barrels for those? Yes, lawn and leaf. And, and as a matter, of, sure. As a matter of fact, you can. Uh, well, you can't put lawn and leaf in plastic bags either. No, no paper. But right, paper bags is fine. But a lot of these uh, extra containers that you might have your old trash can, and, uh, you're wondering what to do with it. We have the yard waste stickers. I brought a few, uh, but we also have them available at the Recycle Center, City Hall, where you can turn it into. That will not be automated. That's still a lot of three men on a truck. How much for a house? How much what? For that power I did, the green one. What's it going to cost? We were we were able to keep the price the same. What's it, what, I wasn't here. What's the price? It's seventy dollars a quarter per unit. A quarter. Seventy dollars a quarter per unit. It's on your water bill. It hasn't gone up since two thousand two. What about the weeks that have five pickup days or the months rather? You know that happens like three times a year. Well, I'll still do it every other week on recycling and once a week on trash. Because actually, you could have like three A days. Or well, you, you're still going to have every other week, whether it, it goes from saying, month to month or whatever. It's still, you know what I mean? Every other one week you'll have recycle, and the next week you no, won't. No, but what I'm saying is, like, in March, mm -hmm. the end of March is in, uh, on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, technically, you would have three pickup sets. And then the, the last two days, or the first two days of April, mm -hmm. or I, I think I got the wrong month, but... One of my point is if the month ends on a Wednesday, Correct. are you, is that the, the fifth week or the first week of the next month? It would probably be the first week of the next month. It, it would still be like, it's not like one person would get two weeks of service in a row and the other person wouldn't get any. You'd still get one, two, one, two, yeah. So that you are going to see it carry over from one, from, from one month to another. Yeah, we still have a special truck for leaves, yeah. yeah. We're still going to do the yard waste. That's on the AB week, too? No, that's it. That's, um, it's going to be every week during the spring and the fall, like it was. It is going to go to an AB week during the middle of the summer when nobody was using yard waste too much anyway. So, but uh, the rest of the time, they will be the same. Are they, like, for each house, do you know whose barrel is what? God forbid yours goes missing. We do. As a matter of fact, they're all going to be coded, and they're read with the barcode as part of the delivery. So if your container shows up somewhere else or there's some random container, we'll be able to just uh, barcode it and know where it belongs. And if it does go missing, then what do you do? Uh, if it does go missing, I would say, and you can't find it, give us a call. That good? Okay, one, can I just, one, uh, one, one other thing I wanted to mention, and I know we've been uh, spending a lot of time on the containers this year, but Keep Brockton Beautiful Day is April 21st, and uh, 
I know many of you have, have participated in that in the past, but I just wanted to bring that up. I know with the snow right now, it's uh, probably not thinking about that, but that's about a month away as well. So that will be out of Heights Crossing, like it had, is every year. Um, starts from 9 to 1. Uh, there's a, a, a cookout after it for the volunteers, and that's usually a good place. So if you have somewhere that you want to clean up, you can put a team together, and, and uh, we'd be glad to have you there. Okay. Thank you, Council. Like a hand for a Thank you, Mr. Sullivan, from the Recycling Depot. All very important information. And you know you can call the Recycling Depot if you have questions about the rollout of this new program, and you can also call me. My number is 508-941-0108. I have business cards in the back of the room on the sign-in table. Feel free to take one, and my official Brockton number is on there, and those calls get call forwarded to the number I just gave you. So, at this time, I would like to introduce um, our Ward 4 school committee person, and he is in his second two-year term on the school committee. And he has a couple of interesting things to share with us. Please welcome Brett Gorman. Good evening, and thank you uh, for having this event. Susan, it's nice to have board meetings on a regular basis. We can touch base with everybody. Um, I'd like to acknowledge a few uh, folks who just came in, Councilor Farwell and Senator Brady, I know they here. Uh, if you have any questions about the state of Massachusetts. Um, a lot of Brockton High graduates here. Awesome. So, I'm a graduate of Brockton High School, I'm a Brockton Public Schools product. I've been your Ward 4 school committee member since 2016. Uh, this is my second term, and if you don't know, we have two schools in Ward 4. We have Davis and the Gilmore Elementary, which was formerly the Gilmore Early Childhood Education Center. Um, and the Huntington School is right on the line of Ward uh, 3 and 4. It's right across the street from Ward 4. So we almost have three school, uh, lower level schools, and South is right there too. So. Those are the schools that I deal with the most, along with Brockton High, um, mainly because I'm there a lot. My daughter is a student there, and my father teaches there, so um, I have a real strong connection to the to the district. And we have a great district. Um, we have a lot of challenges that we have to face, especially financially, uh, but we've been able to be pretty successful uh, in the classroom and elsewhere. Uh, we have a lot of great extracurricular activities uh, and athletics that are doing great things at the high school. Um, we just had a uh, three-time state champion wrestler finish off his career who's also been accepted to West Point along with another Jared TC cadet who's accepted to West Point. Um, so yeah, our, our drama department is currently in the state finals or the state drama competition. So we have some really exceptional kids here and uh, it's really a challenge to keep supporting those things uh, financially that we um, that, that we do here in Brockton, we do so well. So those that's a big challenge for us right now uh, is the budget. Um, I know Council, uh, not Council Brady, State Senator Brady has been a, a sponsor of uh, the recent legislation to help fix the funding formula for the state. Uh, right now, we're still using a formula that was actually uh, put in place right around the time that Mr. Farwell was made. So it's been that long. <laughs> it does need to be adjusted. Um, health care is a big thing that isn't funded properly. Um, as you know, 1993 health care rates and 2018 health care rates have changed quite a bit. So um, there's a lot of work to do there. We have a lot of work to do ourselves to figure this out, um, but I'm confident that we will. And some of the issues that we've been dealing with a lot in the schools, uh, as you've seen in the news a lot lately, uh, bullying has been a big issue. Um, that's something that we've really had to face a lot of challenges with, um, and it's a very complex issue. Uh, it's not clear cut. There's usually a lot of variables involved. Sometimes the victim isn't the victim, sometimes they are, sometimes the perpetrator is not the perpetrator. So it gets really, really messy. Um, and the way that we can deal with that is by teaching our kids to be kind to each other and to stand up for each other. So one of the thing I think we're doing a good job with this um, is talking about being kind to one another itself. Today, they were supposed to have a walk-in day of kindness 
um, but that didn't happen because we didn't have school. Um, and it was in response to the national uh, walkout that is, was, was going on everywhere except for Massachusetts because we just got blasted with snow. Um, but that's a thing that we've been dealing with a lot. Um, and what was the other thing that we were talking about, Susan? Uh, from Kindergarten. Kindergarten, thank you. That was the big one. So everybody, yes, bird babies, thank you, Representative Dubois. That's something that only people in Brockton public schools really know what they are, but those are children who were born in the months that end in Burr, September, October, November, December. We are, or we were, one of four districts that were still accepting students into kindergarten who were born in those months. Uh, so let's say that you were born on September 2nd and school started September 1st. You, you were turning five on that September 2nd you were able to start school. So in a year from um, this current November, so um, of September, that will be changing. So this November, if you were born, or sorry, this school year, if you were born after November 1st, and you turned five after November 1st, you have to start school the following year. Whereas previous years, you were able to start if you turned five that calendar year. Um, and what the, what the reason for that is we've, um, We've seen this for years and years where students who are having trouble academically, uh, many times are the students who are these bird babies because at some point along the line, they, they didn't get what they needed because a lot of the times they weren't emotionally ready to be in kindergarten when they got there. So it, it's one of the things that um, people don't always think about when they think about school. Well, the student academically can handle it, but socially and emotionally, they're not quite there. Um, and we found that when we researched this last year, that I think it was half of the kindergarten <coughs> students who were recommended for retention were students that were born in those months. So they were bird babies. There was only about, I think, 20 students in that area that were help recommended for retention, but half of them wouldn't start school under this new plan until a year later. And I think that it's a big, um, it's a big deal for us because we have a lot of students come in from other districts too. This actually happened to someone in my family. My niece came in from Boston and she was in, um, she got bumped up a grade because she has an October birthday. Um, and she's done fine, but I think about all the other kids that I teach in Boston and I think about some of the kids that um, would have to come in and have issues that way. So um, Worcester is the only other big urban district that still does this and they're talking about changing. So, um, if you have somebody in your family or somebody that you know that has a student uh, that's a four years old and they were born in that month, if you could tell them and, and help us out and let them know that, that this is going on, it would be a big help. I've already talked to some people that didn't know and um, it's kind of tough because I know as a parent paying $900 a month for childcare is hard, especially when you live in the city. Usually you're not making you know $400,000 a year between the two of you. It's not an easy thing to spend that extra, you know, whatever it is, seventeen, nineteen thousand dollars a year that you're spending on childcare. Um, so I know when I, my youngest, when she left, I felt like I could buy a brand new BMW with that money, but I didn't. <laughs> um, so with that said, uh, that's about all I have. Does anybody have any questions? No. Great. Thank you very much, Brett. At this time, I would like to ask one of our Ward 4 activists to come forward. Um, the treasurer of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association and the president of the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association, Ms. Lynn Smith. And she's going to do yeah. an update on what's going on in her organization. Thank you, Councilor DeCastro, and congratulations. Thank you. Um, hi everybody, um, so I'm, I'm Lynn Smith, I'm the treasurer of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. I'd like to introduce the president, Kathy Rose. Kathy, stand up and uh, say goodbye. So we have a couple of things that are going on. First, um, on a more global scale, this is the 200th anniversary of Frederick Douglass's birthday. Frederick Douglass, the great civil rights activist, was born in 1818. And you know that he came to Brockton in the early 1840s and spoke <coughs> on Frederick Douglass Avenue on High Street. 
where Edward Bennett had a stable that was the stop on the Underground Railroad. So Brockton has joined the Douglas Bicentennial community with cities like New Bedford, Lynn, Boston, Washington, D.C., Rochester, New York, Paris, France, um, Glasgow, Scotland, and we are participating in celebration of Frederick Douglass. So we are now on the radar of the Douglas Bicentennial community. So there is an exhibit that we have put together that is a traveling exhibit. So if you're in the main post office in the next few days, March or April, we use the main post office lobby as our art gallery. So the exhibit is there, it's free. It already was at City Hall, and after it leaves the post office, it's going to go to the main branch of the Brockton Public Library. And on April 12th at the War Memorial Building, we're bringing in a scholar and actor all the way from Arkansas who does a one-man show as Frederick Douglass. So watch for these posters, April 12th at the War Memorial Building, 7 o'clock, thanks to our wonderful sponsors. We have sponsors from Jerry Cassidy, State Rep Jerry Cassidy, Claire Cronin, Eastern Bank, Harbor One Bank, Brockton Housing Authority, um, the Just Checking In Foundation. The event is free, but you do have to RSVP because you know the War Memorial Building has limited seating. So if you're on Facebook, look for Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association and you'll see that event. Now closer to home, the Keith Park Neighborhood Association is doing our fifth annual Easter egg hunt. Five years ago, we started to focus attention on Keith Park. And we started to clean it up and pick it up and have events in it. And it prodded the city to look for grant money. And I think a lot of you are kind of happy at the improvements in Keith Park now, the beautiful lighting and the fountain that's working for the first time in 37 years. And you know, that, um, that was where George Keith of Walk Over Shoe had his huge mansion, and his will stipulated that upon his death, when no more Keiths lived in that house, the house was to be taken down and a park designed and given to the city. And Myron Keith hired the Olmsted Landscape Company, Frederick Law Olmsted, Boston, Emerald Necklace, um, Central Park in New York. So it's an Olmsted, his son's, designed park. So the fountain will be turned back on in the spring. We'll be doing a pickup of the park as part of the uh, Make Brockton Beautiful. And the Easter egg hunt, though, it's going to be indoors because, you know, Easter is April Fool's Day. And March 31st, it's a little chilly for the kiddos to be outside. So we're going to be right next door in the Fruit Center gym. So the kids come in 1 o'clock on March 31st. They do arts and crafts. We have an egg and spoon race. They gather the eggs. They go over to the Easter Bunny. And we have our very first Easter Bunny's parents sitting right <laughs> over here in the corner. And I do believe she's a college student uh, now. And her brother was our first groundskeeper and egg scatterer, Anthony. So can you believe five years has gone by? So it's a wonderful event for the kiddos, up to about age 13, 14, and then, you know, they don't really want to get involved and stuff like that. And we have wonderful sponsors for this, Vincenti Supermarket, Ocean Spray Cranberry, um, a lot of volunteers help out, us out. A lot of people donate money for the bunny bags of um, treats. So all the kids go home with a free picture with the Easter Bunny and a bag of treats. So that's April, uh, March 31st. Uh, in Keith Park. You know, we really believe that Keith Park is going to be a spark in the revitalization of Campello. When that CVS decided to build on that corner, you know, their original plan was to put one of those orange stucco CVSs with the red trim, 
And the Key Park Neighborhood Association said, we don't think so. Look at Crescent Credit Union and the brick and the gables. Look at the Campello Fire Station. Look at the Franklin Building. And they changed the design to that New England design. And they donated money to pay for six of the big lights in Keith Park. So we're really proud of the work that the Neighborhood Association has done. And we think it's going to be the start of revitalization. So the egg hunt is March 31st. Then we do a flag day picnic on June 10th. Then we rent that giant movie screen, you know, and we show the outdoor movie, and I have power now in the park. I don't have to get a generator. <laughs> Thank you, God. And then in December, we do the holiday history lantern walk, where we take the kiddos on a walking tour of Campello. And we tell them about the Salisbury River, and we tell them about Walk Over Shoe, and we tell them about Sacco and Vanzetti and the Campello Fire Station, and we tell them about the South Street Historic Park. And then the kids go to the fire station and they get candy canes, and then they go to First Evangelical Lutheran Church and they have a um, concert of Christmas carols. So they learn about pride of place and pride in the community, and they have a lot of fun too. So if anybody wants to join us, if anybody wants to volunteer, anybody wants to be a part of it, we welcome everybody to come. We have a great group of people. We have a lot of um, fun. And I think it really is a way to build community. So thank you all for listening, and we'll see you at the Egg Hunt. to echo what Lynn just said. It's so important to get involved in the community and look at these wonderful things that the Keith Park Neighborhood Association is doing. I, I joined the association last year and I was involved in the Campello Papa Village. I'd like to encourage all of you, get involved. Show up at a meeting and, and meet some new people and stretch and it really, you won't be sorry, it really is a very worthwhile thing. So at this time, I'd like to um, recognize a few more people who've come in. Um, State Rep. Michelle Dubois, who's sitting right here. Hi, everybody. And State Senator Mike Brady. And as Brett mentioned, thank you. And as Brett mentioned, Counselor at Large, Wynn Farwell is here, and I believe. Thank you. And um, Ward 5, Counselor Ann Beauregard has returned. Would any of you like to speak to our this wonderful crowd that we have here tonight? Does anyone have anything they want to add or say? small victories. I've gotten street lights on dark streets. I've gotten potholes fixed. Um, I received a letter from the, from the uh, De Department of Public Works earlier this year asking me for a list of streets that I'd like to have paved with the notion that I probably will only get one paved. So I've submitted several streets with that list and I keep sending more names in or names of streets in as people contact me. I'm expecting that I'll only get one street paved this year. But if you're interested in having your street paved, if it's bumpy, grumpy, and it's been a while, let me know, and I'll put it on my list to submit for next year. I'm willing to try. I don't take no for an answer very easily. I think it's a question of funding, which comes from the state. Okay? Um, what else have I done? I've helped people with their tax bills. I've, uh, I return calls rather promptly. I, I listen a lot. Yesterday I got some calls about uh, the frustration that people feel when the snow... Well, I get calls about frustration because the snow plows don't come through as quickly as people would like. Then I get other calls about the snow plows came through and blocked my driveway. Which, which I, I would get my knickers in a twist over that too. That's just so frustrating. Um, but we have, to, we have to be happy that the snow plows came, I guess is what I want to say. Um, on the city level, since I was sworn in on January 1st, we've had some important things happen. 
Um, recently, we voted, the city council voted to take in a $10 million grant from the, the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts to build a new downtown parking garage. And I, I think you, uh, most of you would agree we need more parking in our downtown area. We've added residential um, buildings to it and we have some growing businesses there including W.B. Mason. We need more parking. We're also hoping to fill more empty parcels of land and those people that come in there are going to need parking. So that was a good thing that we did, I think. The city is going to put $2 million toward that in the form of a bond and the state is giving us $10 million. So pretty soon, probably in the next two years, you'll see a parking garage. And I'm personally delighted because the project managers for this, this uh, parking construction project is a woman-owned firm called Pink and Company. So you're going to see some women in hard hats down there putting up our, our, our new garage, and that's a good thing. Will the garage be pink? <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out and let you know, George, if the garage will be pink. Um, so we did that. And we've also approved some important money to, uh, help, to help children and young adults um, uh, we recently approved, let me see, what's it called? The State Street, the Safe Streets Initiative, Safe and Successful Youth Initiative. We also approved the Shannon Grant coming into the city. And that goes to the police department and they administer it with other um, charitable organizations in the city to work with at-risk youth. Anywhere from ages, I think, 10 to 24, these two programs address. And each program, together they brought in about $570,000 to work with at-risk youth in our community. You wonder what's being done to help children and young adults not go into crime or into drugs. And these are important programs that are having tremendous results. Um, I have the annual report from last year from the Safe and Successful Youth Initiative. And I know that it's working in Brockton because um, Brockton had um, under uh, the percentage that dropped out of school, we only had 9.5%. Uh, it was a really good, really good result. Um, the children say safe. This, these initiatives change your, their lives, and I do believe it. So that was a good thing that we did. Um, what else do I have? Who has questions about Word 4 or about the city? George. How are things coming along with the power plant? The power plant is dormant. Okay, well, um, I, I know there have been some public officials who have said, no, it's dead, it's a dead issue, but it's not. The approval, well, that's right, the approval that was issued by the Energy Facility Siting Board still stands. It has not been withdrawn. And the current developers have twice applied for renewals of extensions of this approval, and they've gotten it. Um, the last extension was granted, I believe, last summer with an eye toward having them bid in the energy auctions which took place last month in February. I don't believe they bid. Um, I think the project that was approved for there 10 years ago is no longer the project that they have because some of the land was recently sold, um, the land that they were going to put their transmission lines on. So I think there's an awful lot of work that would have to be done for this project to be in a position to really bid on energy. But that doesn't mean that, 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 that it won't happen. Um, every month, there are, in, are, are attorneys for the developers that issue letters, their reports to the Energy Facility Siting Board saying where it's at. And they keep saying that it's pending. And they also report there are two matters that are still pending. One is the air quality permits approval. It was appealed and it was appealed again at the Department of Environmental Protection. It is expected that a final decision on the appeal of the appeal is going to be handed down in April, right Michelle? Yeah. In April. So we'll be knowing more about that. And the other thing is, several years ago now, the city council sued the mayor, saying that the mayor did not have the authority under the city charter to sign an agreement settling the case, or an agreement selling um, sewer, sewer water for effluent for cooling this plant to these developers. Um, they said he, he usurped the city council's power. That lawsuit has just been sitting in the Superior Court in Brockton. 
for these last several years. There's been no work done on it at all, but it is still out there sitting. And so for that reason, they report about it and the DEP matter every month. Yes? How come it was never brought to the voters? I don't know. I don't know why it wasn't brought to the voters. Do you think it should be? Well, I asked that to Carpenter when he was going around the neighborhood before he was elected. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, that's a good question. But he never did anything about it. Sure. Do you think, well, what do you think would happen if it went to the voters? I don't know. Right. Okay. Well, I think I know how Word 4 would vote. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I think uh, being the neighbors for it, um, I, think, I think I have a very good idea of how Word 4 would vote. Um, I don't know about the rest of the city who perhaps doesn't feel vulnerable to the impacts. I mean, it's crazy that it was been brought to the organization. It's kind of amazing, yes. Yeah. yeah. But um, it is dormant now. I'd like to see it die. The best thing that I think could happen would be um, for the land that it's on, for there to be other opportunities to develop that land in a way that most of us could agree on. I would love to see more food production down on Oak Hill Way, uh, more things that wouldn't be hazardous. Now, I should tell you, the land that the transmission station and the lines were going to be on was purchased by a recycling company. And, and they're not sure what they're going to do with it just yet, um, how they're going to build it out and all that, but, but they want to be good neighbors. And so the owner of that company is here this evening, Mr. Lou Tarantino. <laughs> Lou's oldest son and mine played basketball together for many years, so we're friendly. We've sat on a lot of hard bleachers for a lot of years together. And, and he is going to come to the community when the time comes um, to roll out his plan so that we'll all know what's going to be there. It's not going to be a power plant, that's for damn sure. Hey, back to that lawsuit. Back to that lawsuit. How come nothing been done, not, nothing been done about it? I don't know why. why I mean, you're a lawyer, done. you know, two, three Sorry. years, something's going to be moved. If yes. I'm going to sue you sooner or later, I've got to be here something. It's on my list of things to look into, well, actually. I mean, with what's going on with that lawsuit, or what isn't going on? I mean, it's got to have closure. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. George. What happened to the Zoots building since they closed up? Yeah. Well, cleaners. they're in they're in Chapter Seven right now, so that's a total liquidation bankruptcy. I'm sure the building will be sold as part of the liquidation of their assets. You know, it's kind of early in their bankruptcy to know what's going to happen. I know that quite a few people were down there in the weeks after the bankruptcy was filed. Um, some of my husband's old law partners who live up in the fashionable suburbs of Boston were asking for directions to come down to Brockton to pick up their, su their suits and stuff that were there. Yeah, yeah. Um, someone else have a question? My, my get... question is, why do they still want to build here if more people in Brockton don't want it? Why? Because they can't get any other place? That's a very good question. That's a very good question. I'm, I'm against it, and I'm not even like four. But I have to say, I think many of us, especially in War 4, have sent the message loud and clear, we don't want a power plant. You know, it's the wrong, wrong location on Oak Hill Way. Dennis. Hello, everyone. I want to thank Susan for two things on the vote that just came up with the city council. Mm -hmm. She voted against some, a young man trying to leave the city, okay, non-residency. We've got a back, and she's backing the residency rule. If we just let everybody just leave the city who are working for the city, believe me, we're going to go bankrupt. The other thing is, she, so she voted for the residency on that issue. Also, she recently voted against the police officers' raise, okay, the, the contract. She voted for the people not to hit us with higher taxes, all right? And that was very, very important. Okay. Yeah, like that, yeah. okay. Thank you. Do I need that? Yes. Yes. Right. So, what basically happened is, you know, the mayor wants to hire a personal friend of his, who was his chief of staff, to be in the police department at a ninety thousand dollar a year salary. But don't be surprised if that goes up to a hundred, hundred and ten salary. Okay. And the police officers, if you saw their contract, it's it's just unbelievable. All right, Susan voted against it, and I want to thank you for that. She's really voting in a way that is for the people, not against the people, and that's very important. Also, you talked about that case. 
Why hasn't it been settled? I don't know. But don't forget, we got two other major suits going on in the city, two discrimination lawsuits that the mayor doesn't want to address either. Okay? Uh, both uh, had to do with hiring practices in the health department. All right? And Susan is taking that one on too. So she's doing everything she possibly can for Ward 4. And I want to say thank you very much. I think two things that I always uh, want to focus on are economic development and public safety. So what's happening in terms of helping to develop um, Campello or get developers in? That's a very good question, and that is my long-term goal, is economic development. We need more jobs to employ our people paying a living wage, absolutely. Um, the planning office has been working on some things. As you know, in the fall, there were visioning evenings um, working in Campello in the corridor on both sides of, of Main Street. Um, last week, at two weeks ago, at the Campello Business Association meeting, the mayor roll, rolled out a, a a project that's coming from the state that has to do with identifying opportunity zones um, throughout the, the, uh, the state. And evidently, 80% of Brockton falls into a, an opportunity zone. I've been told that Campello is one of the areas that they are going to submit to the city, but I'm, I'm calling this week to make sure. The deadline on, on uh, making your submissions to the state on that program is next week. Um, we have a lot of open spaces and empty buildings in Ward 4, we do. Most especially along the corridor of Main Street, which used to be our auto mile. We have to figure out what to do with it, and it's going to take time. You know, the big box stores, including the supermarkets, they used to like to be nestled in neighborhoods like our Southside Shaw's once was. And now they seem to like to be within a mile of a major highway. I mean, think about the roads around here, that's where you're seeing everything clustered now, and, and so that development does not, it's not what's going to help us. The question becomes, what are we going to put there? And we may need to think outside of the box. It may not be traditional retail like we've known in the past. Yeah, but isn't Shaw's, they hold the lease. They wanted people to go in, and Shaw says, I'm not, we're going to rent it. We're not going to rent it. Yes. Shaw's is, is uh, using a technique that actually Walmart is known for. After they, after they close a big, a big building, they sit on it for years and years and years and just pay the rent on it. I understand. Is that legal? Yes. Sure. They own it, I guess they sure. can, right? That's right, or if they're renting it, sure. Yes. yes. I, I know um, for the CVS development, they had to buy out the lease of KFC which had been empty for years, and it was over $100,000 to buy that lease out. Sure, well, KFC saw opportunity and yeah. stepped on it, that's right, yeah. even though they weren't reopening in, at that location. They did a good job. Right, yeah. right. I should tell you, I've been a regular at the CVS because I enjoy having the CVS in the neighborhood, but I've been frustrated by the amount of litter in their parking lot. Yeah. And right from the first weekend that they opened, unfortunately. So I think the managers hide when they see me come in. <laughs> and I, we had several illnesses in our family in the month of January, and I was there, um, it felt like almost every day. I was showing up at CVS for something, and they would just look at me and go, Hi, Susan, we're out picking up the garbage. <laughs> so I had to remind them about keeping their, um, their dumpster contained and this and that. They know me. They know If they don't know my name, they know my face. And I do think their parking lot is looking better than it had been. It's not perfect yet, but it's better than it had been. So we, we're, our, I'm watching. I'm driving the streets and taking a look. Somebody else have a question? George. Uh, downtown redevelopment, um, I, I personally believe that's not going to happen until Main Street becomes two-way. Okay. You, you've done a lot of... You spent a lot of money on research and development and so forth on making that two-way, and nothing's happened. So George thinks that Main Street in the downtown area has to be made two-way to really get the downtown to take off. Uh, Councilor Beauregard, would you like to address that? <laughs> yes, George is being paid to create a problem here. Uh, believe me, I push it all the time, but this again falls to the state and the feds, and we're very lucky that Representative Cassidy and Senator Brady also support this issue. So believe me, they know they have not lining up on this. What we've been very lucky with, though, 
is the you know increased communication and participation by these elected officials. And it's not to say that their predecessors did not communicate with us. They did. But what's happening now is more of an opportunity to see brought in a little bit differently. The biggest way to get something done is to speak up and to show up. So you hear those of you that watch the finance committee meetings and the city council meetings or listen to them, you know, have them on YouTube or what have you. Over and over again, I say, you're invited to all of these public meetings that take place. I was just at planning, okay? You can say, hey, wait a minute, uh, you know, this is going to be next door to me. I want some answers. You have every right to get them. Same thing at Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, meanwhile, this goes on with conservation, water, and what have you. And I always mention to everyone, communication is vital. But, and I'm going to say this, and might get beat up for it later, putting things on Facebook that are not true or misconstrued just exacerbate the situation. And how would I say it? Don't, and get people frustrated over nothing. And I could cite a couple of uh, circumstances. I mean, one of them that really was frightening was this idea of a sanctuary city, which never, ever came up and went on and on and on, which was ridiculous and counterproductive when we were working for several other situations. But I will cite a couple of situations that we're working on. This is Councilor Nicastro's meeting, but we're all working on this collaboratively. We're extremely concerned that foreclosures are back. Okay? anyone sees anything, we're working with the senator and the representatives and our registrar of deeds very closely to really get to this right away because it's a different dynamic than it was the last time around. People were losing their jobs and they couldn't pay. Oh, there's always the illness that, that really wrecks things, unfortunately, in more ways than one. But the real thing is now is if you bought your house for 240 now it can go for 360. You're late with one payment. They're on you <coughs> because they want the house for another, uh, you know. So this, this is, and this can happen anywhere. You can communicate with us. We have our phone numbers. We have our emails, and we go after this situation. There will continue to be public meetings. There will be a presenter next week at the finance committee meeting to address this and mobilize it. A few blocks from here, there is a meeting. They call the Broughton Tenants Association, addressing it because a few people are in foreclosure now. These, these things are being addressed right now. There are other programs that are going to be taking place that anyone can attend to learn about something. We don't have all the answers, but a lot of times we can connect you to people that can help you. All right, so always remember that. As far as downtown goes, you can come to the Downtown Broughton Association meeting, unless it's snowing, on a March 28th at 8.30 in the morning, where you will find out more about what's going on downtown. All right? And it was welcome to these. They're all public meetings. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I did want to mention, if anyone had any questions on Thatcher Street, um, it's not a done deal. And I have the Thatcher Street bag. Um, with all the information where we're going with this and uh, other plans. Okay, so I just, you know, want to let people know. I just had a yes. question, and I, I went to some of the meetings about the 40-hour building and yes. all that, but um, they said that Brockton was one of the highest um, cities. No, we're not one of the highest. We, we are, are the high. highest. We have. But the, what about, uh, what, has anybody suggested putting some elderly housing in there? We, we haven't. And the well, actually, interesting you should say that, working on a project with that, too, okay? So we're not, again, there's many ways of doing things, and you're part of all this, and your suggestions are heard and listened to and appreciated, and that's why we recommend that people come to these various meetings. also want to point out there are plenty of empty slots on all these governing bodies, okay? We vote on them. We do not decide, we're not the individuals that decide. If you want to send a resume and some sort of letter of interest, let me tell you, I will chase Darren Duarte down with it, and you will get somewhere, because he will attest to it. And there's not a week that goes by he doesn't hear about it from myself, because these governing bodies matter. And there's been several occasions in this city where we haven't been able to have a meeting because we didn't have a quorum. Okay, so don't think you don't have anything to contribute because you have plenty. Okay, thank you. Does someone else have a word for?
your question. I just yes. want to mention the Plain Street Bridge, which is starting to get potholes in it and looks like it might be soon here. And the last time that we was here, it took us about nine years. And I had to keep going around, you know, for miles for nine years. And I think that problem was because it was a question of who was going to pay for it. Right. The city, the state, or Amtrak, or whoever. So the, the Plain Street Bridge is declining, and we yeah. should probably start looking at sure, sure, L looking at what needs to be done and how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. Okay, I'm on it. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, unless anyone has more things to say, I just want you to know you're going to watch me move fast. I'm going to block that door because you all have to come over here before you leave and have some of these incredible desserts that. Uh, Kanamara Senior Living made for us, please. Please. Yes, Jimmy. I have more of a comment, um, or just a, a thing to let people know what's going on. April 3rd at the Main Library, we have a bicycle, a Brockton Ad Hoc Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. So if you have concerns of whether you're a pedestrian, bicyclist, or uh, even a motorist as well, uh, whether it be potholes or sidewalks or crosswalks, please come to the library. Uh, we're looking to build this, uh, make sure it's a, a, a ever meeting uh, occasion where we talk about the issues. Uh, I work for the Old Client Planning Council. We're looking at creating a regional bicycle pedestrian advisory committee, but it's also good to have a local uh, representation there as well. Uh, so please make sure you come out and voice your concerns as well. So that's April 3rd yes. at the main library at what time? At 5.30 p.m. At 5.30 p.m. The ad hoc bicycle pedestrian advisory committee. Advisory committee, come to the meeting and learn more. Yes. Hey, he's saying like potholes and everything. Um, I live on right across the street on um, East Nelson and Montello. That is the only hill on Montello Street that doesn't have lights. You sit there like, because I'm retired, so every other day there's an accident. And the guy that's supposed to be doing my porches, he was like, oh, this is entertainment. But, I don't have lights <laughs> but everything has been people killed there. There have been people, and the kids come down the um, hill going to school. Cars just, they see the light at Ber Perkins, and they yeah. see it at yeah. Cor um, Road, and they just fly. There's never been a, tra I've been there 56 years. There's not been a traffic light there. Well, it's funny you say that, because there's a, a very nice man who lives right at the corner of Montello in East Nilsson, and he contacted me in February, and I managed to get him on the agenda for the traffic commission at the end of February. And I went in and spoke on his behalf. He wasn't able to make the meeting. And I'm waiting to hear. I should know by the end of this month what they're willing to do for us. The traffic so commission. I've gone there when I was younger. My mother went and my father because we went to school at Gilmore. And we used to go across. And like every time that people would be kick, get, you know, we knew a kid that got hit, you know, and yes. he got flown over another lady, the car. They went when we were younger. They said they couldn't do anything. But I'm 56 years old. I've lived there 56 years. You've been waiting 56 years for traffic? Well, I've been waiting. I was in elementary school. I was in elementary school. And I've already, you know, graduated and stuff. That was when you're six and seven. So 50 years they've tried to get people. And it's, you know, people even, you know, the guy probably lives in the greenhouse. Because we live in the red house. So it's like, you know, people sit there and it's like everybody in the... Not Brockton, Brockton Police must know our number. I miss your dog. Yeah. Sure. Um, the dog there. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. yeah. that's a state oh, highway. Yeah. That's a state highway, and that complicates. Yes, the it's a state highway, and that does complicate right. it. Yes, the traffic commission had concerns or reservations because I noted to them that there's a light at Grove Street and there's a light at Perkins. Why can't we have something in the middle? And there were real reservations about that. Do you know anything about that, Jimmy? So we've done traffic studies and, uh, and that's another thing as well. So because of the jurisdiction, uh, there's another meeting that's occurring. Jimmy, uh, come up and say something. <laughs> this is Jimmy Pereira from Old Colony Planning and a recent candidate for mayor. Uh, thank you, Madam Council, for having me here. Uh, so, uh, 
Again, Jimmy Pereira, I work for the Old County Planning Council. On April 5th, we have the Joint Transportation Committee meeting. Uh, it's open to the public. So if you're not able to get a local street uh, uh, attended to and make sure that your concerns are, are heard for that situation, it may be uh, because it belongs to a, a state, state uh, agency like MassDOT or MBTA. So you come to the regional planning agency who is the liaison between local and state and federal agencies as well and bring your concerns there. So on April 5th, 12 p.m. Uh, for the Joint Transportation Committee meeting, where we have a meeting at uh, 70 School Street, right across from City Hall. You're able to uh, have a uh, moment where you can uh, bring your concerns, and we make sure to have it recorded and addressed as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank There's, there's a Ward 4 resident here, Janice Plumeri Johnson, and she's doing a wonderful thing. She's just going to tell you all about it. Good evening. Excuse my appearance. I just came from spin class, so I'm not going to take the hat off. Or the <laughs> um, I just wanted to um, let everyone know that on April 7th um, at the Old Colony Y between 10 and 12, I will be doing a fundraiser for my cousin who has stage 4 breast cancer. So if you know anyone that is able to spend, even if you don't know how to spend, but is just willing to donate, please come and see me or let me know. Um, I just did the spend-a-thon at the Old Colony Y, so I'm just continuing on. So um, April 7th at 10, 8, between 10 and 12, we will be doing a fundraiser on her behalf. And on April 8th at Cycle Life Studio in Whitman from 11 to 12, I'll be spending for her there as well. So if you know anyone, just please let me know. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to say to the crowd? <laughs> 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 yes. Oh, I just wanted to address the concerns that that will be on the making meeting. Um, the 27, is it? Yes. Uh, it's called this meeting. By the entrance to uh, Massachusetts. Okay. That area there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. It's been a long time. And uh, that's what happens, especially with making an appearance at these meeting, meetings and making sure that your voices are concerned. Uh, the two-way Main Street, because, and not to say that because there hasn't been any push on it, but instead of happening on the, uh, the, the TIP funding, which is the Transportation Improvement Program funding, uh, for 2019 is getting pushed to 2020. And this is just a study, and a study takes a long time. Uh, things change over uh, several years. You know, if you haven't done the project, then you have to do a study again. Uh, and you know, we need to make sure that we're at the meetings, not just for the local uh, situations, but for the regional and state situations as well. Yes, yes, yes. So it's Thank you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we had a bunch of transportation bond bills that went through, and Massasoit is still moving forward. Um, when Tommy Kennedy was still alive, he was a senator, I was a state rep. Uh, Michelle had just gotten in there as a rep, and uh, we got funding for a lot of different things. Some succeeded, some got, as they call it, kicked down the road. So the funding for the intersection of Route 27, Quincy Street, and Crescent Street is still moving forward. The bad news, though, the governor put the funding, I got $10 million in a transportation bond bill, not just to do Main Street over, but the Old Colony Planning Council, Pat Samella and the rest of the group at the Old Colony had done a yeoman's work about traffic studies and all this to make Main Street two ways to do something with Martello Street, to make some of the side streets more adequate, right turn only lane, so it would, it would lessen pollution for downtown as well, but it would keep traffic flowing, it would make downtown more accessible. And that, that unfortunately got pushed down the road from the governor with his administration. Same thing with the, we, we get an Allied Health Center approved for the old Christos restaurant site. And the waiting list at Massachusetts Community College for the nursing program has a waiting list of hundreds of students with perfect grade point average. And Massachusetts is doing an unbelievable job with their health care and the nursing program. But there's a need for space and openings and so forth. And unfortunately, the administration put that on hold. Also, with the Ganley building downtown, there was going to be a college collaboration um, with UMass, Bridgewater State, and Massasoit, and it was going to be great to help spur our downtown, because I can remember my days in Northeastern, uh, when there were some tough neighborhoods, 
They expanded, Wentworth expanded. It helps out your private business to invest because college kids or their parents have money, so they're spending in an area. And it would have helped spur a life to downtown. Unfortunately, that got pushed down the road. So now the governor come up with another plan to put the unemployment office from another location over the Ganley building. And the plan is the Ganley building is supposed to be torn down and they're gonna construct a whole new building there now. But the other idea was pushed down the road. Same with Quincy Street, and that's still on the, the docket, but it may be a ways down the road. There was a traffic signal they were looking to put up in, in, in Representative Bois' area as well. Now they're looking at maybe a turn rotary style uh, construction project. That's going to start in 2019. Yeah, because yeah. unfortunately that could push down the road. And, and they'll say, well, we don't have the funding and all that, but we're keeping an eye on things because obviously the private sector has been doing fantastic. We are not getting enough revenue into the Commonwealth because communities like Brockton depend greatly on Chapter 90 money, which is state funding for road work. We did Belmont Street over when I was on the city council with service transportation bond money, Route 123. That was all federal dollars. And back in those days, the, the city even had some funding for roads. Unfortunately, the money's not there. We're trying to come up with new ideas to bring revenue to the Commonwealth. For instance, people buy things on the internet. I'm like an old man. I still go to the store and buy things in person. I pay my bills on person. But everybody do, does things over the internet now, especially young husbands and wives that are working. They don't have time to go to the store, so they're buying things over the internet. Well, some of these companies that are not located in Massachusetts, they're not paying their fair share or any taxes to the Commonwealth. So we're working with our federal delegation as well as our state delegation to get some revenue from these companies that are doing business in Massachusetts. And the ones that did go to Boston, which is good, that brings revenue to Massachusetts, but not all of them. The Airbnbs, the so-called, not your major hotels, but the Airbnbs that people rent out. It's not a mile park place that rents out their cottage down the Cape for a week. These are people that are taking advantage of renting constantly, but they're smaller than a motel. They're not paying their fair share of taxes. So there's two bills, one in the House, one in the Senate to get our fair share of that revenue. And there's a difference. And you're in Boston, and they're in Mass General, where nurses have to stay a certain time. You don't want to hurt nurses who are working in Mass General. So Boston's situation might be different than down the Cape, but we're trying to get revenue from that. And there's many other things on the table as well. But uh, we're very fortunate. We've got a great team in Brockton and a great team at the state level. But we're up against some tough situations. One thing different from what you may hear at the federal level and you hear on TV with some of what goes on in Washington, we work very well together, Republicans and Democrats in the Commonwealth, and we get things done, but sometimes the administration has different ideas than what we do. We, we do a lot of earmarks funding for different communities, whether it be Brockton and part of my district goes all the way to Hanover and Halifax and part of Easton, but every year the governor has a right to veto those, which he does, that we override his views, but then he does what's called the nine C cuts. And, and if he feels that there's not enough revenue to suffice, that's a good reason, but sometimes we, we've got to keep an eye that the money's not being spent elsewhere, you know, and we're constantly in deliberations on that. But all of those things that were mentioned, the two-way traffic and all of the above, they were all set to go when Tommy Kennedy was here, and then unfortunately a new administration comes in, and the, the money gets pushed down the road. I'm glad that, you know, the intersection of Massa Street is probably going to be the next thing online. And I, they're doing Belmont Street over up at the VA hospital area, which is a nightmare because the road's in deplorable condition. But they're also looking to do uh, the intersection of Linwood Street going across to um, where McMenemies is in that bank. They're trying to take some of the land where the bank is, and there's a big battle in the... In the, uh, between the state and the owners of the property. So that that's holding that thing up. But they are repaving the other end of Belmont Street as well. And, um, yes? They also need to work on Pearl Street going north. You can't turn left on 123. Going north on Pearl Street, okay. two cars get through there. Mm -hmm. that, like, if nobody yeah. coming south will let you go. Right. I got trapped between a bus and a car behind me one time, and they couldn't move. Mm -hmm. Trying to pull into Stonehill Road. It's oh, it is. And, and, it, and the, the, see, they were supposed to, they, they did change the lights to but have, like, a, coming out of stone, but they need a left turn only lane or something. But either that or they need to put the green light going north before the green light going south. Right. So you are trying to turn left. It's been years that Yeah. The, the tough part is every time there's a different administration, you know, Governor Patrick was here, he was always in Brockton, and some things Governor Baker agrees on us. He's been very on top of the opioid addiction crisis that hasn't just affected cities 
it's affected the suburbs, the very affluent communities. We've had friends that have lost children in Duxbury that started out with pain meds and then they got addicted to other things. And he's been on the same page with that. But some of the other fundings in our schools is another big issue. Uh, he changed the foundation formula with the school administration at the state level, the Board of Education. So they changed how school districts are funded. We have a lot of young families that are struggling that are on free or reduced lunch. They were not counted properly in the last budget, so we fought with them to get the money back in there, but it still was not enough. And I've done a meeting set up with our superintendent in the school department with the Ways and Means Chair, and we're working on a date to get this, because at the state level they're saying, oh, we funded everybody whole, and right? it did not get funded whole. And then if we take kids, and I don't mean to take up all the time, if, if we take kids in from other, other countries, like when the Haitian earthquake happened, we fought because they had to reimburse us. It took almost a year to get that money back. And we leave no student behind. We, we have one of the best school systems in the Commonwealth. And I'll tell you, I hear nothing but great accolades in Boston. What are you guys doing on there? You're doing a great job. But without that funding, we wouldn't survive. So, did you have a question? No, I was going to say, they, they're counting the kids now. They're just giving them less money. Right. Well, well they, but the, the way they change the formula. So I do have a meeting, and uh, I haven't let you know, and I've talked to our other state delegation, because um, I met with the Ways and Means Chair in the Senate, and then I was away at a conference with the um, Speaker Pro Tem, and I mentioned to her as well, and they thought we're all getting funded whole, and there's other communities that maybe, but Brockton has not. So we're trying to be on the same page with that, so we can get proper funding, because... Uh, I'll tell you, we have an unbelievable school system. They're doing a lot better than when I was in school. And I graduated in 1980, and, and we just, on a positive note, I was at a BMZ event, Brockton and Multiservice. A parent who got some help with WIC and everything else was struggling, a single mother. Her, her, her oldest daughter just accept, got accepted to West Point. And we're sending more kids to top-rated schools than ever before. But that, that's a lot of work with our local uh, school that I would teach us. Yes. Thank you, Senator Brady. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You worked so hard for us. Thank you. Well, unless someone else has a question or a comment, I just have a couple of quick things to say. First of all, the snow is going to melt eventually. And when it does, the world is going to look ugly and messy and dirty. And so I just want to ask everyone, let's keep Word 4 beautiful. Let's make it beautiful. Not just on Beautification Day, as Mr. Sullivan mentioned, April 21st, but through the spring, please do what you can to uh, keep, keep your area neat in front of your house especially. Um, and, and my second thing is, Please patronize businesses in Ward 4. Please do all that you can to do that because we want to support the businessmen that we have here, many of whom belong to the Campello Business Association. Um, unless there's something else, thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much.